We know that the functions defined inside a class behave differently than normal functions. The behavior depends on how the function is called. This is just a regular function when we access it through the class. When we create an object from this class and access the same function, it becomes a bound method. Such functions, which are associated with an object are normally called a method. A method is implicitly passed the object on which it was called. For this reason, we use self as the first parameter in the definition of methods. Consider a different example. The logger class has a class attribute enable debug which is set to false. The print method takes a message and simply prints it to standard output if the class attribute enable debug is true. This works as intended. If we create an object of the logger class and try to use the print method, the message won't be displayed. This is because the class attribute enable debug is false by default. If we make this class attribute true through the class, the print methods called through its instances will start displaying the message. Remember the purpose of first self and the print method. When the code for the class definition is executed, there will be a name or symbol in the global namespace called logger. A class itself is an object, details of which we will get into later part of this series. So the logger is a reference to the logger class object. One of its attributes is the class dictionary dunder dict. This dictionary will contain entries for all class level attributes. Here, the enable debug and the print function itself. Next, when you create an instance using this class, a new name or symbol is created in the corresponding namespace. Here, it's the name log. This will be a reference to the new object. This object has its own instance dictionary, which is currently empty. You can verify these values by directly accessing the dunder dict attribute of the class and instances. When you call the print method, Python injects a reference to the same object as the first argument to the function. Since we named the first parameter of our print function as self, this reference is accessible using self within the print function. This is what it means to be a bound method. The purpose of the self reference is to access the object's attribute, that is, whatever values are stored in its instance dictionary. However, here the instance dictionary is empty, and we are not even adding any new values to it. The code works as intended because of the way the attribute lookup works. When you try to access an attribute of an object, Python first looks in the instance dictionary, if it's not there, then Python looks in the class dictionary. This auto-injected self-reference is not needed here, since we don't use any value stored in the instance dictionary. However, we need access to the class dictionary. Python provides ways to let it know that a function we define inside a class doesn't have to be bound to its instance. Instead, we can tell Python to bind a method directly to the class. This is using the class method decorator. When we use the class method decorator, the method will always be bound to the class instead of the instance. Even if you call the method through the class, it's still bound method, bound to the class. Unlike a normal method, the class method can be called through either class or instance. Now, let's focus on the first parameter in our method. Just like an object gets injected as the first argument for bound methods, Python injects a reference to the class as the first argument for a class method. Remember, this is what it means when we say the method is bound to the class. Let's revisit our previous example. The print method works because of how the attribute lookup works. Here, Python first looks in the instance dictionary for an attribute named enable debug. Since it's not there, Python does a fallback and looks in the class dictionary. This lookup won't reach the class dictionary if the instance had an attribute called enable debug. The instance attributes can mask the class attributes when used this way. We can explicitly access the class attribute using the class itself. The problem with this approach is that, if for some reason we change the class name, we will have to update it everywhere in the body of the class too. The best option to explicitly say that we only need access to class attributes is by making the print method a class method. The examples we saw till now worked fine even if we used the normal instance methods. The use of instance methods won't work if we wanted to modify a class attribute through its instances. Consider our original example which doesn't use class methods. This worked the way we intended. When the enable debug attribute is false, don't print anything, else print the message. Notice that the class attribute is shared by all its instances. 
When it is changed, all instances can see the change, and they start printing. We would like to define a method that can be called through the instances. The method should make this class attribute true. Any instance should be able to call this method, and since it's modifying a class attribute, all other instances should see the change and from that point onwards, all instances should start printing the messages passed to them. The default behavior is the same as the previous. Nothing gets printed. Even if we call the set debug method through one instance, only that instance starts printing messages on subsequent uses of the print method. This is not what we expected. When we set an attribute using the self, we are setting it on the instance or object itself. This means we are creating a new entry in that object's instance dictionary. On subsequent calls to the print method through that object, the lookup for the enable debug attribute will only see the new instance attribute. It won't see the class attribute. So, the class attribute was never modified, and that's why other logger objects didn't see the change. Instead, we should make it a class method and modify the class attribute directly. We should make the set debug method also a class method. The class attribute is shared by all instances of that class, and thus all instances will see any changes to the class attribute. Another reason to create a class method is when you want to return a new object of the same class. For example, here, I have a rectangle class and a square class. The square class has a class method that will return a square object from a rectangle object. The length of the sides of a square will be whatever is lowest among the width and length of the rectangle. Notice that the from rectangle method here returns a new square object. The next example is taken from the standard library documentation. It shows a wrong use of the class attribute. In our previous examples, we saw that it's not possible to change the value of a class level attribute using instance methods. In those examples, we were trying to assign a new value to the attribute using the assignment operator. However, here we are not assigning any new value to the class level attribute tricks in the attrick instance method. Instead, we mutate the list object using its append method. This mutates the tricks list. Since the class attribute is shared among all the instances of the class, all objects will see the change made by any one of the instances. Static methods are functions in a class that will never be bound to any object when called. They always remain as a plain function no matter whether you call through an object or the class itself. A static method is never bound to anything so it doesn't receive any extra argument when it gets called. The use of static methods is highly discouraged by some programmers. You can usually use a regular function in the same module instead of a static method.